you have this like realization that you need to focus on like not the what ifs, but the what is, right? How to scale your business without losing sight of what's important. I'm Stephanie, CPO at SumUp, and this is JD, co-founder of SumUp. Today, we're going to be talking about how when you're building a business or you're founding a startup, there are literally infinite possibilities. Like how do you spend your time? So many decisions you, you're making on where you expend your energy. And when it comes to mindfulness and um, prioritization, they're really very interconnected. It's like where your like attention goes, like your energy flows, like when energy flows, your attention goes, like it's kind of a reinforcing circle. And, you know, someone wise once told me like, it, like time is like a river. It carries us forward into encounters with our reality that requires like, just to make a decision, right? And we can't stop our movement down this metaphorical river and we can't avoid the encounters, right? We have to con kind of confront them. And so we can only approach them in, in the best possible way, right? In the age of infinite distraction, yes, you're right, Stephanie, we have infinite possibilities. Like when you wake up, are you gonna work out? When you wake up, are you gonna drink that, you know, two gallon of water that Tom Brady does? When you wake up, like, are you, you know, gonna plan your day out? Are you gonna do your breath work? Are you, are you gonna get ramped up, right? Prep yourself. One of our clients, kind of similar to you, like he's a founder, um, entrepreneur. Uh, he broke the rules though. He dropped out early and of school and kind of founded a brand that evolved into a leading direct to consumer DTC brand, right? So he's a 15 year overnight success story, right? And then in the 2022 season, you know, he sold his brand for nine figures in the digital world, his avatar on Facebook, on Instagram. He looked great. He felt great. Like his avatar, his, his profile photos, everything looked amazing. On the inside, Stephanie, though, not so much, right? He kind of felt uh, off. You know, when we first spoke to him a year ago, he kind of showed signs of kind of adrenal fatigue and slept well in years, like, just felt off, right? And was kind of unhappy with the station, right? So it's not just like, oh yeah, he had a dad bod. He was a former pro, you know, college athlete, but he, yes, he had a dad bod, but he was also on cholesterol and blood pressure medications in, in his early forties, right? And he didn't, didn't know his family. And so, you know, when, when you think about kind of zooming out on that, that entrepreneur and, and kind of focusing on like the health span, the quality of life and the lifespan longevity, right? The biggest issue I think I saw from with him is he was at kind of risk for the big four, right? We talk about like cancer, stroke, dementia, and heart disease, right? Things like someone to diabetes that can knock you out of the game early. And so when we worked with him, it was really just kind of getting a diagnostic snapshot, right? Of where he was and helping him understand where he had to kind of expend his energy in this current season of life, right? His whole identity was wrapped up in scaling his business, kind of making it. Maybe he didn't get enough attention from his dad. That was what he told us, right? We're not gonna name names here. Um, but at the same time, he now was able to prioritize like his relationship with his family, his relationship with himself, right? And also his health. And so in terms of the mindfulness, the mindset aspect, right? It was that flipping that switch, I think, in his mind that you can have anything you want in life. You just can't have everything. But if you prioritize like kind of like the health, the first battles come, come from within. So kind of flipping that switch really helped him out, I think, personally with his mindset, um, just to kind of enjoy the fruits of his success, right? And so as we speak, he's back at it again. He's launching another enterprise. We can't say uh, what it is. It's under kind of uh, under the radar, but he's going to be kind of a success story. And I think just in retrospect, the reason why he's ready to go, he's ramped up, I think he kind of had that switch, that mindset switch, and he decided to kind of put me, put himself first, right? And that enabled him to kind of spend more time with his family. It was just funny, because he said like, you know, on the weekends he would be working um, when he was wrapping his company and he didn't, he didn't even know his kids, right? And when he wanted to hang out with a family, like he would just want to sleep and he wouldn't want to spend time with them. Yeah. And so, you know, it kind of got to a point where it was a vicious cycle, um, but we were able to kind of intervene and help them out with that mindset shift. One of the things that, you know, I use personally from a mindset perspective from helping myself out, this is just my personal piece is uh, I suffer from like, I guess, um, <laughs> I used to suffer from like anger management issues. And there's an app called Othership, Stephanie, that I use that helps you out with like calming yourself down and, and doing breath work and like meditating. Mm -hmm. And everyone's like, hey, meditate. And you're like, how do I meditate, right? And you read like all these successful entrepreneurs and, and CEOs and executives and celebrities, they're meditating, right? And you're like, how do I meditate, right? Um, and there's a lot of apps, but Othership was really cool because it allows you to get guided and it has like recommendations and guidance in like a kind of a, an interesting music setting with like a advisor that like talks through breath work, right? Because a lot of us don't know how to breathe. And that was my constraint, my struggle. Like an entrepreneur struggled with like viewing his health as something that he needed to invest in. My struggle was like like shutting down, right? And so doing that little piece of 
uh, 15 minutes a day or 10 minutes a day using the Othership app, right? That really helped me out in setting up the right mindset to uh, tackle my day and to figure out like what was my highest and best use, right? Shutting off everything, like not opening my phone instead of opening my phone. Yes, I did open my phone and use the Othership app, but like not going on Twitter, not going on emails and using that for the first 15 minutes of my day, it was just exponential what I did. And I didn't see the results overnight. I didn't see it over a week, but over a month of doing it, it was really helpful. And, and so it's like, when you're in your business, like you talked about how you launched your agency in college, right? You were bootstrapping, yeah. selling clients while you were, you know, <clears> taking a full course load, right? You had, it felt like a huge burden, right? Not only did you have to sell yourself and, and, and get through school, right? But you had to kind of manage your brand and clients. How did you get through your constraint? Like what was your kind of shift, that shift, right? In your it's mindset? funny that you mentioned the, um, you mentioned apps and using technology to remind you to do things like to breathe. And it sounds, you know, a little bit abstract, <laughs> not a concept that you're yeah. familiar with, but, and it, it's a little bit funny when you mentioned that, because I was thinking about how like my uh, Apple watch will ping me throughout the day. And I'm like, <laughs> right. Hey, Stephanie, take a minute to breathe. And I'm in the middle yeah. of something and I'm thinking, oh, we can't stop right now. And, but really what's, what's, uh, it makes me aware of when I even have that train of thinking is that, I mean, it's, so important to actually just take a step back and kind of analyze where am I was what I'm spending time on really highest and best use because I think it's really easy to get caught up in the details when there are so many aspects of, of building a business that's something that I found is that maybe I can get caught up on a problem that um, could be resolved a little bit differently if I if I stopped for a moment I took a, a step back and I kind of uh, sit down to analyze, uh, clear my head, do breathing exercises, something that I do. For me, it works best to, you know, dedicate a specific time of day. I tend to do this in the morning and then, you know, if I feel like I need it like later in the afternoon. Um, but even just, you know, like you'd said, focusing on, on breathing, that's something that helps to kind of clear your head because I think it's really easy to get caught up in what you're working on. It's like an art form that we've forgotten. Like you read about all these like business biographies and, you know, one thing that steps to mind was like Stephen Schwartzman's uh, biography what it takes and he talked about how like when he was in pressure situations launching blackstone he would stop and when a deal went bad and, and early in the story he remembered just kind of just increasing the oxygen in his nose like just like deep breathing helped him kind of calm his mind after having lost millions of dollars on this first deal and getting yelled at by one of his investors but just that simple basic of breath work right and then what you were saying resetting to really kind of just like step back and really kind of prime you i I, I think it's really funny though, because it kind of leads me to another kind of point where it's like, I feel like there's a ton of things that entrepreneurs do to like ramp up their day. They do these cold plunges, they do, right? These, uh, you know, workouts, they do, you know, some sort of fast, yeah. like there's so many like pieces and like you can get overwhelmed with all these things you need to do. And maybe like your day starts like three or four hours later, which is, which is a bad thing, right? It's a little, you can, you can get a little too extreme with it. Mm -hmm. So I think the, also the, the benefit of like setting yourself up first and like taking 10 minutes or uh, 15 minutes, or whatever, me time, like setting that me time up in the beginning. Of the day, what helps me out was just understanding, Hey, look, the work needs to be done. You got to do the work. Right. But if like you're setting some me time uh, personally, like you're kind of sharpening the saw and like setting yourself up for success later on in the day, right? So if it's like a walk, a cold plunge, like if it's like just giving yourself me time, I think that was a big break by What do you do though? What, what was your kind of tidbit you did to take stock, to like review your habits and like your cadence of activities? I, I just carve out five to 10 minutes a day and I sit down and I actually read at one point, um, you know, if you're feeling stressed or overwhelmed because of something that's going on uh, in your work life, something that you're thinking about laying awake at night, if you're thinking about it, defer it to later. <laughs> it sounds a little bit silly, but it's something that I've, I've read is that if you just say, okay, I'll, I'll worry about this at 5 p.m. on uh, like every day I'm going to just allocate this, this amount of time to maybe not necessarily worrying about it, but kind of uh, taking stock of, of how you're feeling because I'm, while it can seem a little bit abstract as uh, its relationship to your business and its success and, and while that's so, so important to you, it's something that you feel really passionately and you care about, of course, it's really easy to lose sight of how those two things are related, which of course they are. So just sitting down, taking five to 10 minutes each day to kind of analyze what could I be doing differently? What could I be spending more time on? What could I be spending less time on? And and why? I mean, what, what can I maybe offer to someone else or um, delegate to someone else who might be able to who might enjoy it more you know no, it makes, more makes total what sense and what i enjoy doing no aors areas of responsibility like delegation time management those are like 
key, like a resource allocation. That's what you are as like a head of your firm or a kind of a C-suiter. Like you're really resourcing, like you're kind of resource allocating. You're allocating your time, your energy, maybe your firm, your employees, like capital, right? To get the highest and best use. And I think one thing I wanted to d- double click on kind of what you were saying earlier was you had this like realization that you need to focus on like, like not the what ifs, but the what is, right? Mm-hmm. And like setting up time to, yes, yeah, so you have to go through the what ifs and scenarios, risk downside, right? But focusing on what is can really help you get out of that like um, mental loop of like, hey, what can go wrong? Like I need to yeah. stop worrying. I remember when our website went down, we were just like, oh, what do we do? What do we do, right? And so I think the biggest thing was like, hey, what is, like, what do we need to do? Is it, you know, our domain? Is it our kind of our, our, our hosting? Like what, what, like, what do we need to do, right? And I think kind of working together and focusing on what is not what if, like, did we get hacked, right? I think kind of that mindset helped us like solve it and you solved it in what minutes right and so there's simple <laughs> things like that that was unexpected right like did we expect that no but simple things like that was really basically viewing life like a game right and it's a game and like there's this really popular post and i hate to just drop this but it was called i think it was called grand theft life right and if you view your life like a game like your character has to have points and so like your you know willpower or you know um basically focus or you know accountability like or, or habits right and you just work out on those those points right if you want to be fit for example spending time and energy on, on being fit right if you view yourself like a character and you're playing a game and you like live life like you were you know playing a character in, the, in a video game like Grand Theft for example and you just level it up in all aspect of your life like that's one way to look at it right gamifying and taking taking stock right what do you need to admit what do you you know what do you need to focus on what do you need to prioritize what's the constraint holding you back right from being where you need to be um I think those are kind of some key points in life and it gets back to kind of what, what my mentor said a long time ago it's like you can have anything in life you want you just can't have everything and yes he was wildly successful he's on the cover of Forbes and you know he um, had a bunch of um, boards he was on but also personally you know maybe he didn't have the best interpersonal dynamics with his family and and so forth and some other you know mental issues right or you know demons metaphorically right but I think you had a really good point on like resetting yeah. and like pausing and then, they, and then allocating me time, right? I think in terms of getting the right mindset, right? Yeah, and whether that's, I mean, whether that's five minutes is all that you can afford. I think that it's really something that makes it a huge difference. Okay, yeah. Well, I think that's that's a pretty interesting setup. And so we will catch you on next week's episode of Uber Human Secrets.